Welcome to a special edition of Greenhouse Live on the day that we've been waiting two very long weeks for, Matt. Uh, the day has finally arrived and, the, and it's been an absolute gorgeous day here in Canberra. Uh, preliminary final, one game away, Rabbitohs tonight. Doesn't get any more exciting than this, does it? No, that two-week wait of nervous excitement's really starting to reach that crescendo now. You know, we've got, what, just over a couple of hours left? Three, what is it, about three hours left till kick-off? Um... And as you can see behind us, the fans are starting to congregate. So um, let's see how we turn out. So we're here at the Duxton Hotel uh, in, in O'Connor in Canberra, which uh, for those who have got a memory of being here for a while, used to be called All Bar None, where uh, a certain famous incident happened uh, some years ago, which uh, set us back for a little while. Um, Lots of incidents have happened Well, a few, a few incidents have happened here, but uh, in, in, particular? Particular, in particular one, I think there's a plaque in the toilets that... Uh, um, commemorates that but look what we're going to do is we're going to go inside have a chat there's plenty of greenhouse posters inside uh, have come down from all parts to uh, enjoy the day and to experience this so we'll go inside have a chat to a few and then we'll come out Matt and uh, yeah. have a chat and if that's if you haven't got another media commitment you've, you've had a few this week yeah look you know I was on 2 double this uh, at 3 o'clock this afternoon and um, I'll be up early again tomorrow for one of the FM channels so we'll see how we go yeah, well, I did the ABC and everyone listens to the ABC. So, you know, Matt's, Matt's got quantity but no audience. But anyway, um, let's, let's go inside. Okay, so here's sort of a, a, a random group of, of people here. Um, as I say, it's, um, what, about five minutes to uh, five, so we're about three hours from the game. Um, I'm sticking on what I did in Melbourne, which is not drinking at all before the game, but I think I'm the only one in that boat, so let's come and grab a few people. I think we're actually... These podcast wannabes Okay, I think we're actually... All right, shut up. I think we're actually trying to... Matt, uh, Mike is actually trying to do a podcast when we're on a podcast. So he's trying to do a Green Machine podcast whilst we're doing the, the Greenhouse Live. As usual, he'll be uh, second best. Talk Let's come and grab a few guys. How's it going? Good. What's your name? Aiden. Hey, Aiden, what do you think? Where, where are we at? You're getting pretty towy a few hours before the game? Yeah, I think I'm getting a bit towy. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's been, uh, been a pretty exciting day. And you, you are from Canberra or you come down from somewhere else? Mid-North Coast. Mid-North Coast. We've seen quite a few from Central Coast or, or um, above. So... You've come down here, uh, long drive, but let's hope it's uh, all worth it. I think we're good. I think we'll be good. And are you a uh, post on the greenhouse? Yes. Yeah. What's your handle on there? Green Queenslander. Green Queenslander. Well, there you go. Mid North, Mid North Coast. You from the um, Greg English School of Geography, <laughs> are you? Stop it. <laughs> Mid North Coast. That, that's in Queensland. Is it? As as the song goes, um, that's in Queensland. <laughs> Queensland's everywhere. All right. Good on you. Let's enjoy the game. We'll come and grab some of these blokes. Mike, uh, M2 from the Greenhouse Podcast, thoughts uh, a few hours before the game? Mate, I think it's going to be close, but I give us more of an edge now that Jimmy the Jet's not playing, so I think it sways it a bit in our favour if we can target Reynolds on the fringe based on what he did last week and missed tackles and um, get Jackie run on the ball, he's due, he's actually overdue to finish off some of those long runs and hopefully get a couple of tries and made a comfortable win as opposed to a two or four point uh, win would be unreal and do wonders for my heart. Look, a comfortable win would be very good, but it, it wouldn't be Raiders for it to be an easy no. day. Like it just, it just, I, I can't see it happening. Actually, I think that uh, I think it'll be pretty tight. So um, I would like to think that we'd win easily, but uh, if we win by one point, that'll be enough. But you're right; if it's one point, we uh, we might all have the shakes up until next week. I reckon. Oh, absolutely. And look, we've been a grinding team this year, as opposed to being streaky and putting 40, 50 points and then losing. This year we've been consistent that we haven't been blown out. Uh, our wins have been closer than probably most of us wanted, but, mate, this is what, you know, as a fan, what you live for. Prelim, final, at home. See you, Green. A massive crowd, great atmosphere. It is, and, and you know, as someone, you know, Matt, you're obviously based in Canberra as well, that, you know, just the excitement, we'll get you in a sec, Mike. Just the excitement we've got in Canberra today. I went into Civic at lunchtime today and just the amount of people wearing green and the amount of people talking about the game at work has been been something I think I'd never expect to see in, in rugby league in, in this town, to be honest. 
Yeah, look, I mean, so many people have been posting about wearing their Raiders jerseys to work today or, or a top or a jumper or a hat or a scarf or whatever it happens to be. Everyone seems to be wearing green. It's fantastic. fantastic. Very good. Let's keep moving. We'll grab it. go and grab a few other people. Nick, yeah, well, you go get, let's get a few guys on here. Nick, uh, Greenhouse Poster, your handle is? Yeah, Coastal Raider, mate. Coastal Raider. So, so once again, we've got more people more people down from the coast as everyone's everyone's obviously left the, the sunshine and gorgeous weather here is what they've all come for yeah, clearly yeah. sunshine uh, gorgeous weather and about 10 degrees cooler down here yeah yeah, yeah it's still pretty Magic. good though today Magic. as that sun goes down it will get colder but um you come down and made the trip uh, thoughts at this point mate we're in it we're absolutely in it it's um if it was a footy match we'd be sweet um but there's a lot of emotion rolling around we just got to get on top of that yeah, it is, and that's and that's going to be a big thing. You know, you think the excitement there's been in the place, how the players cope with that and actually feed off that, but don't get overawed by that, is going to be a big, big question. And and I think that start is going to be massive for us. That you know, having had the week off, maybe where the danger is early on is that we come out a little bit sluggish. I said to you before we're having a chat. If it's nil nil at 20 minutes, I'm happy. You know, like I would take that right now. Obviously, it'd be great if we can blow them out of the water early on. But, but if we can be with them early, I think that our fitness, our strength, our, our ability over the year to, you know, come good in tight situations um, will will hold us in in good strength. Look, I certainly think we're going to go the distance. We've proven all year that we'll go the distance. I mean, we've beaten Melbourne Storm twice in the late 70s minutes. Um, so. There's no doubt we'll go the distance, but I'd like to see a score a try early like we did against the Storm, just get the confidence up. Would be handy. Okay, let's grab a couple of other boys. Here's, here's the best dressed man in, in, in town. Where, wears a suit to every game, which, and uh, I'm not too sure where you buy those green suits from, Chris, but uh, they're uh, pretty impressive. Uh, they used to come from Lowe's, Lowe's but apparently yeah. um, uh, Lowe's now don't uh, stop them anymore. A fine men's wear so place. This is one of the last of the kind in Australia, people. There you go, the last slime green suit. Who would have thought there's not a demand for them, you know? Like, I mean, there's a bunch of guys up in Queensland. There's about four or five guys that I met on Magic Round this year. Got a nice photo, but yeah. Just, they've got, got green, green lime green suits. Yeah, lime green suits. So the five they sold were all there together. I uh, hear a rumour. I hear a rumour that this suit hasn't been washed in three years, which makes me a little bit upset that I'm touching it right now. <laughs> well, you're the one touching it, Mike. Hey, yeah, hey, bring it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, very good. All right, well, I think what we might do is, is go out and uh, finish it off outside. It's probably pretty noisy out there. So. Yeah, you better, uh, you better run. It's pretty noisy. Do you have any Mike, comments? Uh, nah. how, how many drinks has Mike had? I think he's had a few. And Honestly, not even that many. And, but and I the think other comment is, that guy's toasted. <laughs> like I said, Nick Roberts is still the best Nick. Well, you know how this works, you actually talk into a microphone. <laughs> Bloody microphone, not swearing. Nick Roberts is still the greatest drunk man on this podcast. I haven't been able to keep up with him yet, but maybe by the end of the night, we might be able to give him a bit of competition. And Nick, Nick Roberts, I think, is on a business class flight uh, here right here. at the moment. Yes, so he will be here pretty soon. So uh, the bar, um, bar takings will go up significantly once that happens. But... Um, no, like, I think Mike's going pretty well there at the moment, but uh, unlike Nick Mann, he's not being held up. So I think Nick Mann may hold the record forever on there's the uh, drunkest bloke on the green machine. Here we go. <laughs> not only does it happen at the ground, but it even happens in the street, Matt. Um, by a dog. Um, at least it wasn't a rabbit. It's true, it's true. They, they, it looks a bit greyhoundish. It might used to chase rabbits. Might chase rabbits. Maybe we might send it out there, out to Bruce now. Um... Yeah, so look, talking in, in there, it's um, really exciting, but it, but you know, you can't get away from the nerves of the of the day. That um, you know, this really is all or nothing tonight. That that the prize of of grand final oblivion. That you know, you, I I think in many ways this becomes almost the most nervous game of the season. I think even even if we get to next week, that that'll be really nervous as well. But but this one, I think, just the the hype around it is is just. Um, so much, we've had two weeks to prepare for it that uh, the nerves have been jangling for a whole week for me, I reckon. Yeah, look, I think initially I think the week off's great for players. Um, obviously, the two weeks to recover from any niggles yeah. is obviously a massive thing, but it gives them a chance to put their feet up and just get away from football yeah. for a week, which I think, I think that's always a huge thing for the team that gets yeah. that week off. But 
getting the week off brings it that expectation of yeah. you've had a week off, you're almost expected to win the next game. So there's obviously a hell of a lot more pressure on the team that had the week off thinking, no, no, people are expecting you now to make the yeah. grand final. So and that, and that is a big difference because mm. we went to Melbourne really as underdogs yeah, and... You know, whereas tonight we go in there with a lot of people expecting us to win. You know, there's an Andrew Johns column today talking about, you know, we should win easily. I think Phil Gould earlier in the week was talking, you know, things would have to go horribly wrong for us not to win. I, I don't buy into that because I think we're going to have to play very well. But the thing that... Here's our friend, friendly dog again. Um, the thing that I, I am confident about, though, Matt, is that unlike maybe Melbourne last week and maybe if we get through and we play Roosters or Melbourne again... I know that if we play our best, we won't get beat. Mm. You know, if we play to our potential tonight, um, I would be very, very surprised if we get beat. I think we'll have too much talent for them. Now, will it go that way? Who knows? But but um, I think that if we play to our potential, um, I think we'll get there. Look, I've said it all week, possibly even for two weeks, that I really think that we're going to win this one big. Yeah. Um, I've tipped us to go 13-plus today. So yeah. I, I, know, I know we've done that. Probably no. Have we done it once this year? Maybe twice this year? A couple. Actually, no, we have because we've got oh, a couple, we won, of, yeah. couple of teams to nil. So, yeah, we, um, look, it, it'd be very rare. But I just I get this feeling that we're on the rise, and the the rabbits have really just been clinging on and, and sort of stumbling over the line. And they got lots of injured players, and they got lots of players who are sort of out of form. I just think I really think I really think it's ours ours this week. I just remember that time in what was it 2010 where you know Benji Marshall supposedly had a dodgy knee and they, half of them were injured and they, they came down and, and Cambo got hurt and we got beat um, so let's, let's analyse some of the game a bit so James Roberts is, is out, we yep. know that yesterday he, and he was at, left out of the 19 so he's definitely out, the rumour the rumor that's going around is that George Burgess is going to be out as well Yep. Um, and either Sewer or Britt will come into the, it'll be Britt. into the team Yeah. Um, so it is an interesting thing that well, I think that battle of the, of the big forwards um, I think, quite amazingly, I think that Liam Knight's one of their leading forwards who's who's had a fantastic year after leaving us. And, you know, he was just a really a bit player for us. But for him to be leading a forward pack is is really surprising. But he's he's um, turned to a really good player for them. Yeah, well, in the last six weeks, he's averaged over 100 metres. He's passed 150 metres twice. Yeah. Um, he obviously started off the bench this year and he's actually swapped positions with Totola because um, Totola started the year starting. Um both those guys are providing 100 metres off the, off the pine. Um, it's, you know, it's a big effort. Um, look, I, I, I always thought Liam Knight was that good. Um, he was dominating New South Wales Cup when he was here for us. Couldn't understand how he couldn't get a gig. But in the end, we let him go because he wanted to be back in Sydney. And, um, you know, the guys we've, we've held on to in, in his stead in Horsburgh, Young and Gould are all seem, seem to be good enough. So, you know, we haven't been... We haven't missed out. So I haven't heard anything about... Our team, where well, I assume that we're um, going to go oh, with, goodness. I think, I think that um, you know the, the big talking point has been probably who that last player is, whether it's Gula or Sutton. Um, they named Gula, of course. They they named it the other way down in in Melbourne. I expect Gula will probably play. Um, the talk has been whether Papali will start from the bench again. Um, I probably wouldn't do that. I think that he probably should start and, and give us that momentum early. Um, Defensively, South I think did look a bit suspect last week. They, they conceded some some tries. You could probably argue that maybe a couple of sin bins um, put it put it in in their space where they could um, you know come away with a win when they were probably looking a bit shaky for a while there. Um, you know, particularly once Trebojevic got um, bin for what was a pretty soft sin binning. I thought um, they got those two tries at the end and, and won the game. Defensively, they are probably a little bit susceptible, I think, and and particularly. Um, Jack White and running at Reynolds, um, who, do, who does seem to be playing a bit injured as well, um, and, and with their, their changes in the centres, that, that does give us a, an option, I think. Yeah, look, I think you'd be crazy not to test out their yeah. right edge early. Yeah. Um, obviously, a lot's been made of it. Um, Sterling's tried to break it down. Thurston's tried to break it down. Um, I think there are a couple of others that have basically said the Raiders have got to work over that uh, their, their right edge with our... Uh, very good left edge, um, yeah. which means you've got to look at trying to isolate Reynolds especially. Yeah. Um, I definitely think he's playing banged up. Um, Burgess, I think most would say he hasn't played a lot of football in yeah. the last month. He's been focused on the niggle and the and the kangaroo judiciary. Um, but he's still, he's still he's such a quality, quality player. player. Yeah, I wouldn't write him off. 
but he's focused on other things rather than playing his football yeah. at the moment. Um, and I actually quite like Campbell Graham, but he has played a bit in the centres this year, but to only really have a week, yeah. possibly less, um, of, of running there um, will obviously hamper him a little bit. Um, but I think ultimately he, he might actually strengthen their defence because I don't, I don't trust Roberts out there. Uh, but he definitely will hamper their attack because yeah. Roberts is is dynamic. And I do hope we can put John Sutton into retirement tonight too. And yeah. I think I think he's looking a bit a bit old at times too. So so hopefully there's some there's some uh, advantages there. To me to me their keys are Cook and Murray. Definitely. I think I think Cook Cook to me is an absolute super player. His his ability off the mark uh, there. You know he's he's got that background of that beach sand running sort of um, history. And and he's and he's just. Um, so strong off the um, off the mark and gives them so much so much pace off the mark. I think that's one of the things that we'll need to be really careful for because if he gets them going and gets them running, that's when they're, they're most dangerous. Yeah, look, I think Cody Walker feeds off that too. Yeah. So if, if you allow Cook to run, Cody and Cook will tear you apart. Now, yeah. I think we did a pretty good job on them in round 10. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they did ultimately win them the game with combining for the first try and uh, Cook putting Herodi over right in the far corner late. Um, you know, again, their, their attack and their points really hinge on those two guys. Um, I think Adam Reynolds is going to keep them in good field position, so if they get ahead, Adam Reynolds will keep them ahead because he's able to play that tactical game management. So I really think you keep their two attacking weapons quiet and they'll struggle. Yeah, that, that, that is interesting, that game um, the first time around. I actually wasn't there. That was... That was the uh, election night, so it was probably about the only home game in in many years that I've missed. But um, well, it's having having watched it back after the game, we we were pretty unlucky. I thought we we had um, the the better part early. Um, Sam Burgess really should have been Sinbin. Should've I mean, sinbin. you look at the way they do Sinbins now; he would have gone oh, yeah, every yeah, time sure. um, compared to where they were doing in round ten. But um, we had a lot of penalty goals earlier. I don't think there was a try in the first half. Um, I think it might have been 6-4 or something at half time, but I think they were all penalty goals. Um, we were in front. They got a try towards the end, and Croker was just sort of very unlucky in the last sort of minute or so. I thought yeah. we were pretty unlucky there, and I thought we were playing pretty well, but I think we were a better team than what we what we showed then. I think yeah. they've probably dropped off a bit. They were, they were probably the best team in the comp at that point. Yeah, they were running hot in the first half of the yeah. year, and I, I said it in Cody inside. Walker, particularly, said, was probably the best player in the game. Well, he was the top try scorer at that stage. He was carving teams up. Yeah. Um, so was Cook. But I think both of them have dropped off significantly yeah. since Origin, and I think that I really feel like the Bunnies have been limping home. Um, I really think that that's the reason, the major reason why I think we'll end up winning 13 plus. I just, I think they've done a lot, and they've been hanging on and hanging on and hanging on, and you, you can only hang on with that sort of football for so long. Eventually, it catches up. So, apart from Mike's uh, comments on Mike's early inebriation, Steve, have we got any other comments coming through? People are watching from all over the world. People Malta. watching. Oh, Malta! Wow, there you go. There's a game. <laughs> <laughs> and and people wandering along in yes. O'Connor too. So um, that's terrific. So, but uh, yeah, everyone's no no serious questions. Okay, no serious questions. Everyone, everyone. Um, well, look, I hope that what we can all do, and it's hard because we are all so nervous, but I hope. I hope what we can do is enjoy the moment as well. It it doesn't come around very often. Um, these are the sort of memories that you, you want to have as a, as a fan. Um, and so whilst it's sort of all sort of so nervous about you know just what's going to happen, let's let's enjoy that moment as well. So I hope everyone's having a great time enjoying it, whether you're watching it um, at Canberra Stadium and, and the atmosphere at Canberra Stadium is just going to be electric tonight. The just the, the atmosphere as we've talked about here and around the town has been been electric. Or if we, if, or if you're, um, if you're watching at home, wherever you are, whether you're in Malta or anywhere else in Canberra in Australia, hope you're really having a great, a great time. Enjoy it. We will be back after the game, and it's going to be potentially the biggest green ever, isn't it? It's either going to be the most sombre one ever, or it's going to be the biggest one ever. And well, hopefully the biggest one ever for, um, for a week. You know, like <laughs> hopefully there's a bigger one to come, but. Yeah. But um, it will be the biggest greenhouse live. We, when we uh, started doing this three years ago, um, this is the first time we made the final since we were doing this. So um, I have always dreamed that we'd say welcome to Greenhouse Live for <laughs> the Raiders are in the grand final. I, um, I dream of saying that in a few hours, Matt. Yeah, look, we've got, what, another five hours or so to figure that out. Um, look, if you get out to the ground, just be loud. Loud for all 80 minutes. 
Um, so that's, if you're a crazy fan watching this, you're probably already going to be loud, but tap those those casual fans or those uh, patriotic yeah. Canberrans that are sitting next to you that haven't been to games, tell them to yell and scream. Tell them that the Bunnies are always offside, they're always throwing forward passes, and any sort of niggle, they've got to go to the sin bin. Just yell, scream, the boys hear it, and they've been saying it all week, but they, they hear the noise. So the more noise you make, the bigger difference you're going to make to them. Okay, look, I think we're going to leave it there. Uh, we've now got two and a half hours to, well, supposedly start of kicking off. I've always said there's, there's two time, times. Mate. There's two <laughs> times. There's, there's, there's time and then there's NRL time and there's about 15 minutes difference between the two. Um, it'll start probably after 8 o'clock, but um, two and a half hours there or thereabouts. We're going to get out to the ground pretty soon. We'll see you all out there. and we'll, We'd love to have you all on... Um, at the end of the game, we'll be outside the West Gate where we normally are, um, either celebrating with us or um, perhaps wiping the tears. If, I, I've said all along there's going to be tears one way or the other come, uh, come 10 o'clock tonight. So, more than ever, Matt, until then... Go the Green Machine. Go Raiders. <laughs>